Hello, this is Dane Wigington with the geoengineeringwatch.org weather update for February 27th, 2014. As the constant and radical climate engineering continues, many are finally beginning to wake up. The extreme fluctuations of temperatures are waking even those that have been completely in denial up to this point. The roller coaster of temperature extremes in the eastern U.S. goes into yet another round this week as the weather makers push yet more cold air south over the Great Lakes region and other surrounding areas. This cold follows several days of as much as 50 plus degree temperature weather with thunderstorms and tornadoes. Again and again and again, the Weather Channel Theater and its actors try to explain why there are now warm sides and cold sides to winter storms. This is historically unprecedented. Over and over, the same paid off meteorologists try to explain away the incredibly anomalous jet stream behavior. The job of mainstream media now is to make the completely unnatural seem natural to the public. Until recently, many have accepted the lies, but thankfully, that's starting to change. Now, even some of the most recognized experts are admitting on the record that they cannot explain all the anomalies occurring around the globe in regard to the weather. For many in the eastern U.S., the whole world seems a frozen wasteland. Those in the mainstream have done their best to fortify this belief, though it couldn't be further from the truth overall. True, we are now in for Polar Vortex 3. Any that take the time to research global maps on temperature deviations from normal will take note of the extreme glaring cold zone that is only in parts of Canada and the eastern U.S. again and again and again, over and over and over. These are the areas that are being most heavily geoengineered toward the cold side. Temperatures in parts of these regions of North America have this year been colder than the North Pole and even colder than Mars. Does this seem just a bit off considering we just had the warmest January on record in Alaska? For the entire planet, January 2014 was the fourth warmest on record. This was the case in spite of the fact that everywhere we try to examine temperature readings, the quote official temperatures are now routinely being underreported by as much as five degrees. Let me say that again. In regions where we have tried to verify the quote official temperatures for the day, we have seen the official temperatures underreported by as much as five degrees. What does this mean? It means that our planet is much warmer than we are being told, and official agencies are quite literally lying about this fact. The climate engineers have kept the parade of engineered snowstorms and manipulated jet stream cooldowns trained over the same locations over and over in order to create maximum media hype and maximum confusion in the population. Should it really be colder in parts of the lower 48 than the North Pole? Should the temperatures in many locations fluctuate some 50 degrees or more in a 24-hour period for the daily highs? Just to state for the record and to jog people's memories, 2012 was by far the warmest year ever recorded in the lower 48. How did 2013 end up with so many cold records in some parts of the U.S.? These cold records are in spite of the fact that November 2013 was the warmest November ever recorded on planet Earth. If you don't believe me, verify everything I'm saying. It's all on the record. Also for the record, Earth just had its 37th consecutive year of above average global temperatures. Yet another record to take note of. We just passed the 346th consecutive month of above average temperatures on planet Earth. Let's keep going on this. The Sochi Olympics were the warmest ever recorded. But what about down under? Is it cool down there? Well, no. 2013 was the warmest year ever recorded in Australia, by far. It was so hot that the meteorological maps had to change their color reading, their color codings, to reflect the never before seen temperatures. Could all these facts be true? How can this be, given the fact that the Weather Channel Theater paints a constant picture of a frozen planet? Consider this. That's what they're paid to do. That's the picture the climate engineers want the American population to buy into. The weather makers hammer the same highly populated regions of the U.S. again and again and again. They engineer snowstorm after snowstorm with artificially chemically nucleated snow, which thankfully many people have now taken note of. Headlines of cold, that's what the climate engineers want. That's what they are so focused on. The most populated regions of the U.S. that get hit over and over. That's the story the totally controlled mainstream media puts out. Does the media cover the rest of the planet that is constantly at far above normal temperatures? No, almost never. 
does the media mention the fact that as of February 15, 2014, the Arctic ice cap is again at all-time record lows? Absolutely no coverage of this. What about the massive methane hydrate releases now occurring in the Arctic, which have all the potential to end life on Earth many times over? Not a word about this dire situation. And what about the brand new cloud types that were only first identified in 2009? Didn't anyone look up before that time? I'm speaking of Undulatus asperatus, a type of cloud not noted before 2009. Again, how can this be? On the 25th of February, Undulatus asperatus clouds were noted in Georgia. Amazingly, new types of clouds have been identified in recent years, many new types. Doesn't anyone question this? How are we to believe that these quote new clouds were always there and no one noticed them before? Clearly, there are many atmospheric anomalies that are now the results of the unbelievably engineered climate. How has the corporate media altered reality on other aspects of weather reporting? Here in the Western US, the mainstream media cheerleaders now jump up and down if the high Sierras get eight to 10 inches of snow, as if that's a really big storm. In years past, such a small amount of snow could be considered a dusting. In previous decades, the Sierras would commonly get storms that measured snow in feet, not inches. Californians are fed lie after lie after lie from the media about the drought being a part of a quote, natural cycle. I would ask what's natural about a global climate modification program that completely alters the Earth's natural systems? What is natural about the drought creating effect of these programs? What is natural about having our skies sprayed full of highly toxic metal particulates day in and day out? Does the EPA report any of this contamination? Of course not. What's natural about having our jet stream manipulated with the dozens of HARP radio frequency transmitters around the globe? Our planet's life support systems are completely unraveling and climate engineering is rapidly worsening this process. All are needed in the fight to raise awareness. We need everyone to do their part. If we can awaken a critical mass of the public to the all-out assault they are being exposed to, the geoengineering dominoes will begin to fall. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.